Hey everybody, it's the bald man once again, and today we are going to be talking about the Phillips curve. <clears throat> so usually uh, we uh, get into a new graph, you know, I'll teach you how to label it and how to, and what the shifters are and how that affects, shifters determinants, right? How that affects uh, the curves of the grass, of the graph, uh, so on and so forth, right? Uh, but this is a different kind of graph. Uh, we will go over the shifters for the LRPC and then we'll discuss everything else, right? And you'll see what I mean uh, about this being a kind of a different graph. So first of all, the LRPC, SRPC, what does that stand for? That's the long range, <clears throat> long run Phillips curve and the short run Phillips curve. The NRU is short for the natural rate of unemployment which again is five we have the unemployment rate and we have the inflation rate as well uh, <clears throat> this graph is used to measure the misery index and if you remember from class this graph they will not teach you in college because your college professors do not like this graph but college board loves this graph so we will definitely definitely delve into this all right, so first things first, we're going to start with the long run Phillips curve. We need to think of the long run Phillips curve as being really similar to the long run aggregate supply, which is really, really similar to the PPC uh, as well, right? Now, if we remember, there were three things that affected the PPC, and the, so those same three things will affect the LRPC as well. <clears throat> and once again, what are those three things? We have trade. We have technology <clears throat> as well as the four factors of production. And again, those four factors, <clears throat> what are they? All right, those four factors of production are, uh, remember that acronym I gave you, CELL, right? So the acronym I wanted you to remember was cell and the the c in cell is for capital we get more capital <clears throat> we can grow our economy more entrepreneurship right we have more of these uh, men and women that are willing to risk their own uh, money to make money that can and most of the time does help our economy out again and then we have labor as well as land, right? Anything happens to any of those uh, th uh, four things, as well as trade and technology, our LRPC will be affected. <clears throat> now, what about the short run Phillips curve? How does this all work? All right, so you remember from class, I told you, anytime you're gonna work with this graph, if I were you, I would draw an aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph alongside of it. Why? Because if there is a change in aggregate demand, we do not shift the curve. We move along the curve, right? It'll be a point along this curve that we will be moving. And if there is a change in aggregate supply, that's when we shift the curve either to the left or to the right. Now, how does this all work? Uh, that's a very good question. And let's see how this works together, right? How these two graphs work in conjunction with each other. So I am going to start off with an ag uh, aggregate demand aggregate supply graph that's in equilibrium, right? And we are going to uh, see what happens to our aggregate demand aggregate supply graph and then uh, show, the show the changes in the Phillips curve graph as well, right? So in this case, we're gonna pretend everybody got a pay raise and that is going to move aggregate demand to the right. Why? Because now everybody has more, more money to spend. And when you give people more money to spend, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out and spend it. And consumer spending drives up aggregate demand, as you can see. Price level goes up. Output goes up. All right. So how would we show this on the Phillips curve graph? So the first thing we need to realize here, guys, is that the Phillips curve graph is a mirror image of the aggregate demand aggregate supply graph. So if being to the left of the LRAS in an aggregate demand aggregate supply graph represents 
us being in a recession, then being to the right of the LRPC will represent us slipping into a recession, right? And if we are to the left, I'm sorry, to the right of the aggregate supply graph, right? If we're over here on this side, then we are overextended on the aggregate demand average supply graph, right? However, on the Phillips curve graph, being to the left of the LRPC means we are overextended, right? So how does that help us right now, right? Well, we can see aggregate demand uh, increased and that drove up our price level, right? For our purposes, what does this mean for us? Well, we have to show an increase in inflation rate on the Phillips curve graph. And since everything happened to the right of the LRAS, it needs to happen to the left of the LRPC. So if I put my point here, we can actually see that the inflation rate has indeed increased and we are now overextended, right? Because we moved the point along the curve. We saw uh, the price level go up on the aggregate demand average supply graph. So we need to show the increase in inflation in the Phillips curve graph. And that'll give us a really good indication that we did the right thing. Uh, okay, so once again, guys, if you have any questions about how the Phillips curve graph works, uh, please drop a comment down below or send me a message on Remind. And I will see you again soon.